All right, so we'll start the recording now. We've got uh, the base drawing from Jim Leggett uh, uh, taped down. This is a very simple photograph of, of, a, of a master plan, uh, photographed at an angle and then printed out, and it's the fastest way to go from plan to aerial perspective. Uh, of course, other ways, you know, this may be a SketchUp model or it might be a, an inner, a different uh, aerial format, but whatever you're starting with, uh, I recommend when we start to extrude masses and trees and things like that up, to have more than one pencil. Uh, the, uh, the red pencil method of uh, overlays, uh, as prescribed by Jim Leggett, is very complete. But, I, but we might think about a couple of color pencils here, just so we can distinguish things that are on the paving plane, things which are extruding up, and then buildings as different colors, just so we don't get too confused. So I would probably start with buildings. And so I take my parallel glider, and take a look at this, this proposed building over here. And then just start to extrude up some vertical lines around each corner. We won't see that one there. And then just pick a height if we want for the building, however tall we think it should be. There isn't a scale to this drawing, so it's just a matter of selecting a height for it. So visibly we can start to see this as one facade of the building here. I got my snazzy new rubber tired parallel glider. I'm so excited. Ah! Art Mart had a 30% off sale today, so it was like Christmas. And we'll just connect these dots. Once you pick a building height, you can carry it all the way around the perimeter of the building. So just pull up a wireframe of that building there. Uniform height all the way around. Connect the corners and edges. I'll add a little bit more color here so we can see it really well. I'll do the same for this building over here in the lower right. I'll just pick a pick a fairly uniform height, gentle height for it. That might be a Walgreens or a restaurant or a corner store, something like that. Pick a height and then I'll carry that height around the building. color that in a little bit just so I can remember what I want to happen there. As we get to the top of the drawing here, there's we're, we're going to start to lose stuff. So I think the trees are probably going to cover up everything. We're not going to be able to see much there. But we can put something in the roundabout if we want. Put some sort of monument or obelisk or something. Or some sort of spire or I don't know. Whatever, whatever you'd like to do in that middle of that roundabout. Be 
piece of public art or something like that. And then, and then, we've got these sort of pylons here, these urns or pylon things. So these are like decorative columns that are entrance into the either this part of the neighborhood or, or a part of an institution or office campus or college campus or government entity. So we'll, we'll have some fun with these. We'll just extrude them up. Give them some height. And then I'll just want to make sure that they're fairly uniform, right? They're, that they reach some sort of semblance to each other. They don't have to be exactly. So we just extract them as boxes. And we'll do some we'll do some stuff with them later, right? So we'll we can start playing with things. We can put more geometry on them or or give them a little bit of a taper. Either taper them up so they look like little chess pieces or something. <laughs> or put lighting on top of them. You can see uh, two zigzag walls next to each pylon, and that can maybe, those can be decorative walls, but they could also be a transit stop. So I'm just going to extrude up a height for those. And they could be, these could be solid walls, they could be open structure, like pavilion style structure, just as a shelter, maybe for as a bus stop or something like that. But also it's an entrance, a formal entrance into this, this part of the city, this district or campus or otherwise. This could be a college campus or an office campus or a medical campus of some kind. I just want to mass those in quickly as these zigzag walls. switch colors now because we're going to probably start thinking about what goes on our paving layers. If this is in fact a bus stop, I need to make a cut right into the, I need to do a bus pull off. So we're not following Jim's recommendations 100%, but we do need to make a cut off there, a pull off for the bus. So we'll add that in on the paving layer. Keeping in mind that the crosswalk is there and the crosswalk is there. So these are going to become ze zebra crosswalks. Why are they called zebras? Anyone? Because of the stripes. Ha! They're called zebra walks because of the stripes. Isn't that lovely? Oh. Zebras could be so proud. So I, I took uh, the Sparkies on a five-mile hike today in the cold, so I'm full of pep and oxygen and endorphins. So yeah, anyway. <laughs> and caffeine. Hmm, what's happening here? What's, what's this? What are these? What do we think these are? So maybe an urban trail or a cultural trail. Look at the trees here, right? So, so there's trees here, but there's also trees here. So this might be part of a larger pedestrian bike network. 
uh, potentially, or like the Indianapolis Cultural Trail, which is separated from the traffic here. So that's important to remember um, as we work. Okay. So we've got our two bus stops here. Let's see. Shade that in just to remind myself. Sometimes, some, sometimes I forget about it, but this is parking. This is surface parking. This is this is a park over here. So we maybe even start to think about that as a park space. Maybe a fountain in the middle, something like that. What else? another building over here. So. Okay. And that kind of, that's pretty good. That This allows us to give us a good sense of the types of structures we want here, some of the vertical structures, and maybe this, this becomes more like a bus shelter. We can extend that, you know, or an arbor. That could be fun. And we start to think about some covered bus shelter stuff over here on this side. Just I'll just make a quick rough there or roof 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 do you say roof or rough okay up there in Michigan we say roof yeah it's up there on the roof I know I spent some time in Michigan so uh, <laughs> yeah up there on the roof in Michigan, we don't say rain gutter, we say eaves trough. Eaves trough? What? Yeah, it's like a feeding trough, but up on the eaves. Oh. Oh, you mean the rain gutter? Yeah, whatever. So I'm just going to put a little bit of shelter there for our, our bus patrons. And I'll stop the video. Well, no. Let's keep going. We have to figure out what kind of roof we want on there, on that library there. So on Jim's example, it's a confusing roof, isn't it, right? Because it's park flat and park in. It's just like park hall, by the way. Park hall has park flat and then gate. So it's a little bit confusing. So what do you want to do? What kind of roof do you want to put on this? Up to you guys. What do you want? We can do gable. We can do hip. We can do solar panel on a flat. I mean, we can do anything you want. We can do butterfly. <laughs> what do you want to do? What kind of roof would you like? Simple gable? Yeah. All right. Cool. Okay. Simple gable. Make an X on the far right side. Okay. Use a different color if you have to. Whoop. Simple gable. I make an X on the far right side. Then I roll over to the X and I make my peak. That's the new peak. Then I decide on my height that I want the gable to be. Then I connect the dots. There is the far gable of that building. Okay. Easy, right? Then 
we just take the ridge line. It's not parallel to the walls because it's slightly vanishing to the to the left. We just carry a ridge line over. Okay. We match the angle of this little guy. Roll on over. Put him up there. Match the angle to this little guy. This one here. Roll him on over here. He should theoretically meet right there, right? See this wall over here? Ah. That looks a little better. All right. That looks a little better. Gable, gable. Okay. It's a big old gable. Now, see this part of the library coming forward towards us. See that? Coming towards us. We need to make the gable for that. So, we go from this corner and this corner. And I just broke my pencil. Ah! Another one. I want to make a gable for this part of the building, this one right here. Okay, so I make a plane from this corner to this corner, make an X. That's our midpoint. Make the peak. And that's our new gable. Boom. Boom. Okay. And then we simply carry that ridge line all the way over here until it meets right about in there. So now, big gable terminating into that other gable. This outcropping from the building, we can simply follow suit, right? Plane, X, peak, gable, gable. Have it slide right in. Some of your houses might be built just the same way. Just two gables, slide, one sliding out of the other. Simple gable design. But this top ridge here has to run a little bit further and then meet the larger gable. I'll shade all of that in now for reference. Here's one roof. Here's the smaller roof. Here's the opposing roof. There's the opposing roof. This is the big side of the gable. Okay. Here it is all filled together. Okay. I'll stop the video and check check it out. Tall palms, like so. Where did he put them? Let's see. Yeah, it's maybe one here. Maybe another one there. Okay. And 
And then the other trees. We'll just do circles for those. Basically, there's there are circles on on lollipop sticks at this point. So. I'll pick another color for that. So just lay them in there. Go whoop. We don't have to do every tree, but a few would be nice. Whoop. a couple trees if you think you need them in that foreground. There's not a lot in the foreground, so I'm just going to add more at the moment, but I'll just kind of lay in. And then these are all going to be trees in the background. I'm just, I want this drawing to disappear in the upper part here. So, so a couple trees behind the library the side, and that should be enough. So it looks something like that. So a little bit Willy Wonka, <laughs> kind of like Candyland there, but all that information starts to layer together with with what's on the base drawing, and that'll be enough for us then to do our ink ink overlay. I get my trees laid in. Let's pause the video. Maybe people using the crosswalk, headed to the bus stop, and some plants, ground plant level plantings, or flowers, or perennials. I'll never forget the streetscape that uh, I think Edaw did for uh, Disney did Disneyland Anaheim. All of the plantings and all the medians and all the uh, green strips were all uh, birds of paradise. Just <laughs> hundreds of these beautiful orange flowers. So if you ever find yourself in Anaheim to, at a convention, and many of you will, <laughs> because a lot of professional conventions are held right next to Disney, Disneyland, you'll appreciate uh, the wonderful streetscape that's, that's around the convention center and hotel area. Uh, it's very similar to this streetscape that you're seeing here. Except they have a lot more palm trees in Orange County. So I'll keep working on the foreground here. Add a little bit more to that palm. I don't want to do too much because the color should do most of the work there. I'll just put a flat roof on the pharmacy. These crosswalks here. This median.
curb. This pan is failing. Throw that away. Sketch in now the bus shelter on the opposing side to just a simple rough and column along with our wall. Put a bench there, some people sitting on the bench. This detail was not a lot of detail to the people. They're basically just little, little tornado people little just a dot with a little bit of swirl and that's it that's all they are at this scale I'm going to show people just sitting around this pylon Lots of sitable space for that. This might be a signage pylon or a light pylon, just as a mark to the entrance to this campus, whatever that campus is. Like we said could be an office campus, medical campus, or college campus. This is a surface parking lot, so you can see the diagonal lines. I'm just going to just put in a few cars there. Just need a few. You don't need to populate the whole lot. My cars are starting to get simpler and simpler as I get older. Just need to show the vehicles pulling in and out. Mm -hmm. 
sidewalk continues through the zebra crossing. Plants in the median. We don't, we can't have a lot of tall things in the medians, but the engineers get very upset when you put either tall things in medians or things that cars can hit. I once put I once put several boulders in a median in Pennsylvania and the IDOT engineer was like, no, <laughs> a car will hit that. And I go, oh, right. And he's right, a car will hit that. <laughs> so. Now this pen is dying, so <laughs> this is not my night for ink pens, but we'll, pow we'll power through it. If I can take 40 freshmen on a five mile hike in 38 degree weather, I can get through this, so, <laughs> right? <laughs> One year we were in Chicago and it was 32 degrees on the Chicago field trip. It was, woo, 32 degrees in October. <laughs> 32 Fahrenheit, I should say, yeah. <laughs> And as you work, just keep thinking about maybe the corners and curb cuts, you know, thinking about those as grasses or flowers, uh, where you can put those. Try not to interrupt the sidewalks, though. That's why it's helpful that we put the zebra crossings in on the underlay so we didn't forget those. Grasses. If this, this, if this were California, those would probably be perennials or drought resistant perennials. There's a lot of great stuff happening in California in terms of plant species and selection. Uh, they're going, they're getting much smarter now uh, with, with uh, succulents and perennials that can survive drought because California is experiencing drought like never before, so. Very different than when my parents were stationed there in the 50s, so. These curves on the roundabout, we won't see much of the roundabout. We will see parts of it because the trees are going to cover up a lot of stuff back there. And we'll just let these trees take up the majority of our background. Let them do their job.
that's a splash park or a splash zone back there. Put a little extra paving in there, some seating, people. A lot of cities are installing splash parks, splash zones, writing grants for those things. Some great recreational amenities in small towns across Indiana now. This is our cultural trail running through. A couple of bikes on that. your trees nice and loose you can see how loose and messy that uh, uh, the trees are in the example there because they're so small and because this we're so far away in the origination of this bird's eye or drone's eye view you know there's not a lot of detail we can get into with the trees we just need to get those impressions of the branches and trunks in there and the impression of the canopy in there and we'll fill those up with color here shortly. So. And this median, or these these green landscape greenways could they can be all flowers or grasses. It'll be really lush stormwater <laughs> retention in there. That'll be fun. Maybe there's some ornamental trees next to the library. Create some connections from the cultural trail to the library door. Maybe do something fun with the library grand entrance. Something, just some sort of fun projection out from the gable. Doesn't have to be terribly detailed, just maybe some sort of glass and metal kind of precipice to create some sense of entry into that library. Do some fun paving in front of it too. Sitable space. And then jump into the roof line. Oh, there's a palm there. Oh! Ha! Just had a Bob Ross moment right there. Oh, maybe a tree lives here. Huh, it needs a friend. We were at, a bunch of us were at Art Mart earlier today for their 30% off sale, and then they now sell Bob Ross lapel pins, and the whole Bob Ross thing has really turned into a commercial thing. Still can't believe sometimes that he recorded most of those shows right across the street. <laughs> so. Where did you record them? Across the street. The Ball, Communi Ball Communications Building, really? Muncie, Indiana. Yep. Yep. 
So he passed away my freshman year. It was on the front cover of the Daily News and it really upset a lot of us because it just came out by surprise that he passed away. But, but yeah, he passed away in 94, 1994. And I was a freshman here, so. few more cars on the road, maybe another bus. I'll finish up this roof. windows, a few more trees behind the library. I don't know what this little small building is. Maybe it's a Starbucks or something. Next to a library, makes sense. I'll just put a couple more trees in the background behind the library. I'll finish out this front gable. Now this pen is dying. Some of the great library architects in our area, uh, KRM Associates out of Anderson and, and uh, in Indianapolis have won some awards for their libraries, so check them out. Ratio Architects is starting to get into libraries. Great firm out of San Antonio called Lake Flato has won AIA from the year. We've had several interns down there. They do some fantastic campus buildings and library buildings. It's a special part of a community because many people believe that libraries are under threat, but 
Libraries are still the most important dispensary of, of social services information. Um, still, still very and very important for internet access in many communities. It's if it weren't for the library, there would not, you know, be a lot of access to government documents and employment and job training opportunities. Um, community health is often dispensed or awareness or information in, in the public library. So really, as when you get out there and as you become practicing landscape architects, architects and planners, just become a real defender of the public library because it, it's, it's so important that the nation maintains its libraries as social centers and access to free media and as well as access to the internet. Take some blank paper, I'll slide it underneath and check my work. Make sure I don't have a lot of gaps. It's filling in nicely, so we're good. Next, we need a fun geometric design for the intersection. So, this previous year's example. went with a basically a modified checkerboard pattern and we just had some fun with color so any anything will do just um, create some sort of pattern or stained concrete that we can do in stained concrete which is uh, most cost effective uh, for this application so I'll, I might take the midpoint of that lane there and the midpoint through that median. change it up but basically a ba very basic uh, pattern that we can we can do with stained concrete is an is a pr pretty straightforward economic way of doing it so if you look at Muncie's downtown it uses stained concrete for all of the uh, zebra crossings those are all individual slabs poured in place cast and poured in place Once he's downtown, was done by Flatland Resources, which is a local landscape architecture firm. We have two alums working for them now. there. Okay, I'll restart the recording now. We'll start with my landscape colors. So I've got three greens, yellow green, grass green, slate green. I've got a lilac, or as my mother said, lilac, lilac, lilac. Pale cherry and beige. Sky blue, we only will use for uh, for windows in the upper stories. Okay, so these are my landscape colors. So make that selection. Set it aside. We'll start with our yellow green. Whoops! 
What did I just do? <laughs> nice. Fun fact. Jim Leggett uses sign pens. Sign pens are compatible with the AD marker. So he renders everything on one side. I don't. I like the ability to use different markers, some of which are not compatible with AD markers. So that's one of the reasons we, we render on the back. Starting with a wash of yellow green and all what we might consider lawn areas. That's yellow green. It appears very yellow on the screen, but it is yellow green. And then I'll layer some grass green over that. Just as these loose washes, a combination of yellow green and grass green. Keep it nice and loose. Most of the work of this drawing was in the line work. Just let the color just add a little bit of accent to all the work that you put in, in into into the line work. Let let the color do the work. Now I'm going to take beige, and I'm going to hit beige on all of the sidewalks. Look at Jim's example there. You can see a little bit of warmth on the sidewalks. Just distinguish them from the other paved, paved surfaces. All of the sidewalks get a little beige. I'll also hit the building with some, some beige. Take a little bit of cool gray three, a three gray, just a little bit of three gray, and just wash in a little bit of, of, of our pavement. Just a lot of warmth there on the buildings and in the sidewalks, just crosswalks and in in our intersection there. I just I want that beige to really warm everything up. See how it's warming everything up there against the grays. Just a little bit of that cold gray three is all we need for this asphalt. Do not render asphalt black, ever. It only is black for the first couple months and then it turns a variety of grays. It also depends on what the asphalt is made of. In some states the asphalt turns red because of what's used in the aggregate. 
depending on what's in the aggregate, that's what color it will take. I'll take my grass green or my moss green and I'll just I'll start hitting some color on the trees. Just scrub some color on the trees. Not the ornamentals though. I don't want to color the ornamentals green. I want I want to do something different with the ornamentals. I'm going to use lilac or pale cherry for the ornamentals, or both. Again, these are hawthorns, red buds, or crepe myrtles, depending on where you are in the country. Uh, we have some wonderful flowering ornamental trees to choose from that are often used in streetscapes. Crepe myrtle is popular in Maryland and Virginia. We like, we like red bud and uh, winter king hawthorn here. Slate green, give some darkness to our deciduous trees. A little bit of green in that palm, slate green in that palm, slate green in the lower half story of these deciduous trees. See what I mean? The length of time was really invested in the line work. It's amazing how fast you can get color on these. Some sky blue on the upper story windows. Let's keep the roof simple. Roof, 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 roof. So I'm just going to use grays on the roof. Maybe that's a zinc roof. Zinc roofs are expensive, but they last 200 years. They're used a lot in Germany and Europe. Because zinc, zinc oxide creates a protective patina over time and actually seals the roof. It's a fantastic roofing material. It just it's very expensive. my six gray and I'm just putting a little bit of gray on these flat roofs, a little bit of gray on the bus. Got some pale cherry and I'm going to mix that in with my ornamental trees, the lilac. If you don't have a lilac then pale cherry will do. Again for our ornamentals. Pale cherry is really good for flowers too. If we want some flowers in our median areas or our intersection, we can start to lay some color for that in there. Craft brown or desert tan might be optional if you want to start adding some more accent colors onto buildings or the paved median. Want? If you want to add a little bit of that? I've got a color called sun tan. I'll simply add that to my buildings. 
because I have inadvertently put Desert Tan and Craft Brown into my other set. <laughs> A little bit of suntan, which is a great color. And I'm going to start putting that suntan into my pattern here. When you're done with that, blueberry comes in. On Jim's example, as you can see, he uses gray for his shadows. Uh, I'm going to use blueberry for mine. So I have to pick a uniform direction. I have to pick some sort of direction here of where the sun is going to be and where the shadows are going to cast. There might be a set direction for that on your plan, so always know sort of where north is and key that into your drawing as you're working. Uh, we don't know anything about this here, this example, so we just have to pick a side for where the sun's going to be and where the shadows are going to cast. So I'm just going to pick a side and I'm going to drag Blueberry away from all of those things that would project shadow onto the ground. Trees. Tree trunks. bus shelter and pylons, even cars, individual cars will cast a shadow onto the pavement. Individual trees, shelters, the bus, all those things will cast a shadow with blueberry in the opposite direction of our light source. Got roof lines that cast onto the building. Use blueberry to, to accentuate those. Really works very well with all of the building colors there. Okay, so blueberry is our last marker color. Then make a selection of colored pencils. I'm going to pick up sienna brown, beige, tan. Some orange, some red, blue. There isn't that much to do color pencil wise. If you look at Jim's example, he's only using it in some places to accentuate grasses, trees, texture, and and uh, as well as the pavement. So there's not a lot there, and as well as roofing and things of that nature. So I need gray. I need a lot of colors. Which means, obviously, I need a green. A couple of greens. Okay, what else do I need here? Purple's nice. Purple's always nice. So just a, you know, just a handful of colors uh, to accentuate things. So my sienna brown is good for 
if we if we want to think of something as being made out of brick, uh, a brick wall or a brick pylon, we could do that with sienna brown. Please don't use brick red. Please don't use brick red. Please do not use brick red. Use sienna brown or terracotta instead. Hey, that rhymes. <laughs> yeah. Gray is good for adding lines to a metal roof. This might be a zinc roof. So just add a cool gray to that. It starts to give the impression of the lines of that metal zinc roof. Just accentuate all the work we put into that gable. See how that really makes that, that shine there? And then if you want to add more brick color. The beige is already there, so you can really decide how much you want to do with lower story, upper story, or if you want to do a combination of limestone and brick. We're not really <laughs> kind of, you know, importing these ideas to this to this maybe California or Arizona context, but Purple, I'll add a little bit of purple to my ornamentals. Hit some purple on some of the shadowed areas. Of course, green will really blend in all of our trees nicely, make them really shine. I'm holding the pencil differently. Uh, I've got a nice sharp point on the pencil and I'm holding it in this style which is all, all five fingers are supporting the pencil and I'm just very quick, just letting it barely contact the paper just to really get an edge of green onto these areas. So it's a different way of holding the pencil but it's, it covers a lot of color very quickly. Remember back to our first classes, the way that we hold the media can have an effect on how that media behaves. Splash of color on vehicles, maybe the buses, or a little bit of red for flowers, red or orange, just for some some of the flower beds around the bus stop, around the library. <coughs> and I've got a. Green ochre, which is an interesting color for different paving schemes. It's kind of a sage color. Works really well with that Eddie Bauer crowd. And then if you want a color for your zebra crossings, those can be a stained concrete 
pour or brick pavers or concrete pavers. Finishing touches, primary colors, a little bit of blue in the window in the upper story, just a little bit of blue up there. A little bit of purple maybe in the lower. Accentuate some of the shadows if necessary. Most important thing though here is knowing when to call it done. Don't overdo it. that I will call done. This concludes the gym-legged exercise aerial perspective of an intersection.